Well, hello and uh, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, welcome to the SCSA uh, luncheon and annual general meeting, where we'll be having uh, a number of uh, awards and uh, get a chance to uh, to eat together. Uh, so again, welcome. Uh, my name is Colin Pular. I'm the uh, president of the Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association and on behalf of our board of directors and the SCSA team, uh, I'd like to welcome you to our 20th uh, annual general meeting and awards lunch. Uh, we'll be in inviting His Worship, Mayor Michael Fougere, to speak a little bit later. Uh, this will be followed by uh, some formal business actions with respect to uh, celebrating our 20th year and uh, but more importantly celebrating the members uh, in our industry that have done so much within not just the industry but the business community broadly to uh, impact the culture of business and improve safety in Saskatchewan uh, and we want an opportunity to publicly thank them. So yeah, it's, my, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce and invite uh, Mayor Frigere to, to speak for us for a few, moment, few moments today. Um, he, he, he called me yesterday and asked, uh, asked that I not worry about all the formal intros um, that he, he normally gets. Um, you know, I'll say though that most of you will know the mayor from his previous role as the Saskatchewan Construction uh, Association's uh, CEO. And, uh, and with that, uh, he's got a very deep understanding of the safety issues across the entire building industry and, uh, and related industries. He's also uh, has a deep understanding of the challenges with respect to attracting and retaining uh, skilled workers. In addition to that, being able to protect skilled workers so uh, we don't have to keep trying to go out and attract and <laughs> figure out how to retain new ones because we've, uh, because we've hurt them. Under his tenure, uh, Regina has become a significant, has seen significant investment in construction, whether it be uh, new home development, uh, the water treatment facilities, or the new stadium just, uh, just across the parking lot here. Uh, the biggest thing, though, is that he has been uh, a very strong uh, personal and professional support to me and an encourager to, uh, to the organization. Uh, I'd like to invite Michael to come up now and please uh, help me give him a hand. Well, thank you, Colin, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the invitation uh, to be here. Uh, I think I have a couple of tasks here today. First is to bring greetings on behalf of uh, the city, but also the other one is to uh, talk a moment about Colin and try to embarrass him. Uh, for those who know Colin, of course, he's a very passionate uh, person, works very hard and very diligent. But I, I noticed last week that he was away from the office for uh, a few days, and um, does anybody know where Colin was last week? Let me know what he, he's, his, one of his passions is, is uh, He's a very strong man, you can tell by looking at him. But I want to tell you, um, he was at the, I want to get this right, the 2016 Powerlifting Bench Press National Championship. He won a gold medal, and he's now qualified for the Worlds. That's good news. So a round of applause for, for Colin for that. <clears throat> so if that doesn't intimidate you enough, and I'll get over this in just a moment, Colin, here's some of the weights that he lifted. Uh, and just, it's, just, it's astonishing, a bench press of 435.4 pounds. Just think about that. Other lifts, he did 606.3 pounds and 584 pounds. Colin wants to come to my house and lift the edge of my house up later on. <laughs> amazing guy. Anyway, I just want to share with you that he is a, he's an amazing individual. He also does a lot of great work on your behalf. Uh, as your new CEO, relatively new. I've known Colin for a number of years and, and know he brings a lot of passion and, and discipline and has done a lot to, on the advocacy side for your industry. Now, I stepped away from the SCA in 2012. And at that time, there was a different perspective on, on safety only in the sense of, of the advocacy side. So what I see as an observer is, is some good things happening for your industry, um, your higher profile, of course, it, it's so incredibly important that, that the culture of, of companies uh, puts safety of workers first. Absolutely fundamental. And the role of SCSA, among other things, is to inculcate that, bring that forward, provide the programming, provide the opportunity for companies to excel in, in really helping the biggest asset, which are the workers. So to the Safety Association, which you do each and every day to build our city and our province. Thank you so much for that. And during my time with SCA, 
uh, SCSA was part, literally part of our association. It is shared accommodations on Elphinstone Street. But the industry knew, the companies knew, that we had to focus, you had to focus on safety in the workplace. And um, you got a new place, expanded your, your programming, your staff around the province and done a great job of doing that. Uh, I just know that um, when you speak of um, work being done here, investment here, skilled workers here, uh, in my role as, as the mayor, one of the things I, I want to try and do is, is to attract uh, public investment in infrastructure. And that's a big issue for our economy today because we are uh, not in, uh, we're not going backwards, but we're slowing down, uh, plateauing, tapering off a bit. But as a stimulus money, stimulus investment by the federal government and the province, it's important that we, uh, we have a, a willing and ready and able workforce and companies to do the, uh, that kind of work. And we do in this province, no question about that. So my message today is to thank you so much for what you do to build our province. We are um, a diversified economy where we see lots of good things happening and we will continue to see that in the future. I know that part of the event today is, is an award ceremony to, to recognize those who, who have done a great job. And um, you deserve that recognition, no question about that. So on behalf of City Council and all residents of Regina, thank you again for the work that you do. Thank you for building our province. That is what you do every, each and every day. No one else does it but you. So thank you very much again, and uh, thanks for the invitation to be here. Okay, well, thank you. We'll start this portion of our meeting here now. Um, I will, I'd like to introduce to you uh, our chair, uh, Errol Fisher, who is with Northridge Developments. Errol has been uh, uh, our chair for the last two years. And uh, our normal tenure for our chair is, is uh, typically one, but uh, when I came on board, it was partway through the year, and uh, Errol was willing to, uh, to help me through the transition and, and getting started here. So I really appreciate the, uh, the additional time and effort that it's taken for him. Uh, he's gotten quite used to our uh, late night texts, and my, my wife's wondering every once in a while what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, uh, Errol has, uh, has just done uh, so much to, uh, to support uh, not only myself, but the entire organization, and um, uh, along with leading the executive uh, committee and the board. So uh, if you help me welcome Errol Fisher. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out. This is probably the most informal one that I've been to, and when I mean that, there's no table in front with all the board members sitting at the table. Uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at two minutes after one, somewhere around there. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the 2015 board members, and I'd like you to remain standing after I introduce you which means Stacy you get to stand the longest so next the vice chair Stacy Beaver and we'll, we'll hold applause till the end uh, past chairperson Doug Kitch member representative to executive committee and Re Regina RSC employer representative Ryan Smocha SCA representative to the board of directors Kim Sutherland General Contractors and Prince Albert RSC Employer Representative Keith Bird. Mechanical Contractors Representative Carolyn Bagnell. Trade Associations Industrial Representative David Hagen. Trade Association Structural Representative Dana Padel. Dana, sorry. SAS Provincial Building and Construction Trades Council Representatives. Gunnar Passmore and Mike Skripnik, Estevan RSC Employer Representative Mike Murray, I don't think Mike's here, Yorkton RSC Worker Representative Erin Heimbecker, she's not here either, Saskatoon RSC Employer Representative Nancy Chadwick, did I miss any? If I did, stand up and we'll introduce you. That's our two 2015 in attendance board of directors. A hand for them all, please. Thank you. So you should all have the agenda, the agenda in front of you. And 
I'd like to get a, a motion to adopt the agenda as presented here and ask if there's anyone that wants to add anything to the agenda. Gunner. That's a, that's a motion. Okay, he's not adding anything. He's going the motion to adopt it. So we need a seconder. Ryan, all in favor? Carried. Now we're looking at item number three, adoption of the minutes from the February 19th, 2015 AGM. So I'm looking at someone to, actually first I'll ask, is there any questions after you've looked at the minutes from last meeting? Seeing no hands raised, I'm gonna guess no. So I'm looking at someone to make a motion to accept the, the minutes from the last meeting of February 19th as presented. David, seconder. Ken. All in favor? Carried. Business arising out of the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, we have none listed here. Is there anything that anyone would like to bring forward? Again, seeing no hands, I'll assume no. Um, annual reports. All the reports are, are, are listed in the the AGM package. Um, for the regional committee reports, I don't think we're gonna have the people um, come up and, and uh, say anything about their reports. You can see them again in the back of, the, in the back of this handout. Um, for mine, I'll keep it brief. Mine's in here too. Um, it, it's been a pleasure. I've, I've been on the board, I think this is the sixth year, and chair for a couple of years. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about the association. I've learned a lot about its strengths and its weaknesses. We're working on the weaknesses. Um, that's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of work going on in the next couple, couple of years. Uh, we have a new CEO. We have a new general manager. Uh, I think we got really lucky with both these guys. I think we're moving in the right direction and we, we will continue to do that. We've got good people on the board, good people on the executive. Um, the, 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 even the, the relationships that we have with uh, occupational health and safety, workers' compensation, and workplace safety, we're working with these organizations more and more all the time, and, and the more we work together, I think the stronger we'll be and the, the more effect we're going to have on, on safety in Saskatchewan. And that, that's it for my report. And now I'll call on Kevin to present his. Call on to present his. That's th three times today I think I said that. Uh, th th thanks, Errol. Um, we, we, we did miss, and I don't often correct uh, Errol, but we did miss Ken Pickering, who's a, an alternate on our board and was uh, so good to be with us today. And um, so uh, thank you as well to, uh, to Ken. Um, I too have, um, have my written report that's uh, uh, in your package today. As you can see, there's a, uh, a lot of words there, um, but there's a lot of things to say about uh, the last year. Um, the the change and transition we've uh, we've gone through as an organization and a little bit of the environment that we see ourselves going into and the excitement that we have about it but uh, uh, before I get into that uh, a couple of folks uh, well they're kind of teasing me about about this whole lifting thing and and I um, uh, I talked about how uh, it's kind of it's it's neat to to be in the experience of uh, uh, being the person who looks like they're in the center of the stage on the light, but uh, there's at least a half dozen people that are all standing around you, uh, supporting you, uh, having the, the spotters and the loaders that their job is to save your life when you get in trouble. Um, the, uh, the coach at the back who is uh, guiding you, uh, helping you build out the strategy, and then having a handler that, uh, uh, that makes sure that you're in the right place at the right time because all those things are extremely important. and. Um, and it's very much like uh, the team that, uh, that, that we have at the organization, uh, at the association that I've been really lucky to uh, work with and, and I'm very, very proud of. Uh, uh, some of them are here today. Uh, we couldn't bring the whole 40-something crew with us, but uh, 
because most of them are out there doing what they need to do, either uh, instructing courses or visiting sites or uh, coordinating student calendars to uh, to make sure that folks are uh, are able to get into the courses and get their certifications that they need. But um, uh, but some are here today. Uh, I've mentioned that we've gone through in here that a lot of significant change and. Um, and the team has uh, given me their trust and confidence, which is which is pretty humbling when you think about it. Um, but uh, today, I just if I can just also ask these people to stand, uh, make sure I don't miss anybody on our team here. But uh, Laura Abigazella, who is our uh, communications and publications coordinator, uh, Heidi Tiller, who is our HR coordinator, and uh, major part of the stuff that we do as we're planning out our teams. Uh, Kelly Lafayette. Now Kelly. Oh, there she is. Um, you, for anyone who's been at a board meetings, Kelly has got the numbers and knows where they all came from. So I uh, really appreciate her. Ashley uh, Owls, who you met uh, earlier, and uh, uh, Fanal, part of our, of our corporate uh, team. Uh, Loy Gursky. Lo thanks, Loy. Loy is our uh, advisory services manager. She's based out of Saskatoon, and uh, her team are the folks that you uh, you typically see on your sites and, and visiting. Uh, Kel Sloan, who's our uh, just joined us recently as our uh, uh, manager of, of uh, strategy and business development. Uh, Sharon Lockhart. I don't know if she was able to get her. She had a uh, another uh, uh, appointment that. Uh, that kind of conflicted here. So Sharon leads our uh, our administrative backbone uh, that makes sure that the systems are are running the IT systems that maintain uh, records and um, our certifications. Uh, Murray Zakreski, who's uh, from Saskatoon, and he is uh, our training services manager. And some of you who've uh, been working on things like uh, uh, development, say with Polytech or, or other groups. Uh, We'll know, uh, we'll know Murray. And uh, finally, Blake Schneider, who is our Director of Operations, uh, based out of Saskatoon, but uh, almost half the time seems to be in Regina. And uh, be kind to Blake, he's, uh, he's getting over a cold. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Blake is, doing, uh, is, is leading our, our management team there. So um, please congratulate uh, this, uh, this team here, please. Again, the, uh, the, this last year has given us a time to, to, uh, to reflect on uh, a, a, few, a few different things that have been uh, of importance to us. One is developing uh, strategic partnerships, but a lot of, that's another word for building strong relationships with, uh, with people who have interests, common interests. Uh, whether that be with, uh, uh, we talked earlier about the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health or uh, folks who are working with the uh, Regina uh, Bypass and uh, helping develop some strategies around communicating with the general public or electrical contractors and we've got uh, Howard there at the, at the back who's representing them. But also with our sister safety associations um, and uh, really glad that, uh, that a couple of them are here uh, today and uh, with, uh, with folks representing Mission Zero or Safe Sask and, and, uh, and, and carrying the, uh, the banner for Mission Zero. There's a reason why we need to, uh, to, to develop these uh, particular um, partnerships and, and really work hard together on it. And part of it is that, you know, I've heard too often that, um, that you know, safety is, is uh, safety is an expense. Safety is an expense, and we started to shift the talk and the conversation to st safety as a strategic asset. And um, uh, and over time, more and more companies, um, business associations of others have have started to say, say this much of the same thing. Yeah, we get to keep our people. Uh, we don't have to worry about recruiting new ones because we've the folks who are who are on our team are are healthy and continue to be uh, productive and develop along the way. Um, but for us to do that, we knew we had to do a lot of work on developing our, our own internal skill sets, uh, whether it be uh, uh, for, for our own transparency or building the skills of our own team. And so we made it a, a really strong priority to begin evaluating every part of our operations. Um, and Blake is going to be talking uh, about a few points on it, um, everything from our employee engagement to know are they... Uh, we want to know are they uh, a are they engaged in this process? Um, uh, B are they uh, are they eager to learn and share that learning with others? Because 
uh, honestly, um, I had an opportunity to talk on a radio station for about 25 minutes, uh, be about a year ago. And I was asked the question, well, what, what makes a good safety officer? Somebody wants to be, wants to get into, into that business. And, um, uh, the word came out was, was leadership, all the different aspects of leadership. They got to like you to listen to you. Uh, they, they need to be able to, um, have the, the skills to be able to get people to understand how much they care, how much they care that the project gets done right on time, on budget, without having people hurt in the process. And that is, uh, uh, and it, it just kind of blew out that way. Uh, it wasn't a really a scripted thing, but that became something that we kept uh, repeating over and over again. We knew that, uh, particularly in the residential construction um, area, that we've had um, things are things are soft from a perspective of we've got two and a half times the injury rate still in residential construction than we do in any other part of our industry, and that uh, we need to take some special focus to. Uh, educate and uh, work with the uh, Canadian Home Builders Association of which Errol has been really great about opening the doors to uh, to deal with that particular uh, issue that's that's that we're, we're challenged with and culture is changing over time we have seen more companies take a stronger interest in this not just from a compliance issue but they said you know this actually makes business sense and uh, so we have uh, we've been focusing on on that over this last year in post-secondary, what's really kind of neat, um, for a whole variety of reasons, uh, we've had other industries contact other post-secondary education uh, institutions, and we've had the opportunity to collaborate around uh, developing uh, developing standards um, around training. And that's this is a it's a lot of work. It's not a it's not a quick turnaround necessarily, but the fact that uh, you know the mining sector is talking to the construction sector and um, uh, We've got folks who are fairly close on some things on, on bringing together a, a common element and standard in that area, um, whether that be in mineral or the, the um, uh, extraction uh, sector. The University of Regina's uh, Center for Management Development, um, we've, we've engaged uh, with them or they've engaged with us um, uh, around evaluating uh, safety culture. And we have been uh, exploring with them, and it's still very, uh, still very early. But we're uh, as soon as Sean Tucker's back from BC, I think we're going to be picking it back up again um, with uh, having tools that help companies evaluate and test what's the culture like in their company. The culture is your biggest indicator whether or not you're going to succeed or fail. It's the biggest indicator whether or not you're going to have people go home in, in a body bag or uh, or go home safely, be able to hug their kids, and. Uh, the, the perception of what workers feel is happening in the workplace is uh, is a major uh, is a major piece that we we think we need to uh, we need to get involved with. The way that we recruit and develop people is uh, again this is something that at, at the executive level we've had many conversations on. Um, uh, I think Errol said it is it's uh, recruit slowly and how did you say it, sir? Hire slowly and fire quickly. <laughs> you know, somebody else said that. Okay, and uh, that's sort of what. I mean. But uh, you know, the, the foundation of uh, of identifying and bringing on people with with strong character um, that uh, that we can develop the skills with that uh, that are passionate about what they do are. Uh, uh, have the skills to be able to engage with uh, with not only business owners but the people on on your team uh, to help shift the business culture within your own organization. Uh, we've been been really focusing on tools that allow us to uh, to identify folks uh, like that. We we know that's going to pay dividends over the over the long run for sure. Uh, a little bit around employee engagement and turnover, uh, those kind of things. We've decided we're going to start reporting on as and as a management team evaluate the different elements that fall underneath that. Um, as, as a way to, to, uh, to continue to develop our, ourselves as a professional services organization. All this stuff is um, in light of all of the ups and downs that are, uh, that are happening in the economy. And uh, we know that things are volatile in, in, some, in some sectors and some things may be a little soft in others, but um, we're Saskatchewan and things are going to, uh, um, 
we are at a new norm now and a new level of, of business operation in this province. And everything we're doing is really for the, for the purpose of fulfilling the original dream and uh, envision that the, the folks who started this organization 20 years ago had in mind. Uh, they wanted us to be able to influence the culture of business in Saskatchewan. Um, they wanted us to re help find ways by engaging others and communicating, get people to think differently about how to avoid the, uh, or how to control the avoidable losses on, uh, on sites. And, um, and so we can have most successful work sites in this province again, uh, on time, on budget, and, uh, and zero injuries. Um, that's, uh, that's my report in, in summary. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Blake if he would uh, come up and uh, he's got a short operations report and uh, that's, uh, that's my submission. Thanks, Colin. Um, as you may or may not know, I've been in this operations role for be a year next week. Um, and during that time, I just want to express the gratitude that I have for uh, the support that Colin showed me and that uh, my, my people, uh, they've, they've been great. Um, there is a day goes by that I don't appreciate the constructive approach that the board and the previous association management took in building an organization with a strong sense of values. Um, it's these shared values, wanting to make a difference, working towards a common goal of eliminating construction, site fatalities and injuries that has shaped the association culture. And by that I mean that the people that I work with are passionate about what they do. And for me it's really, it's great to see that, that they, they, people want to make a difference and that's just, that's just awesome. It's a culture that provides us with our greatest source of competitive advantage. However, you know, I, I want to look at what we did in the past, but I want to look to what we're going to do in the future is really the, the key for, for us here. We live in a time of extraordinary change, uh, reshaping the way we live, the different associations, the, the, the relationships we've renewed with other associations are, are an example of that. Um, you know, the way we build our relationships and partnerships, the way we work with our industry and the associations place in the world. It's a change that promises amazing transformations if we think about the business of safety the business of safety. And it gives us, the association, the opportunity to fundamentally change our culture. Several weeks ago, uh, <laughs> in the office, there was a, one, of, one of my staff was saying that uh, he thought my pencil was a little too sharp. And meaning that I was watching the numbers and maybe our budget a little too closely. And yeah, I, I'm the numbers guy, I'll, I'll give you that. I believe this is a compliment that was extremely, or comment, well, a compliment, that was extremely relevant and timely in both calls for increasing, increased transparency and accountability. And our recent world events, such as a temporary economic slowdown and a gradual change in the demographics of our construction force in Saskatchewan. You know, workers are, are, are still being killed and injured on job sites. That's something that's a concern for all of us. I want to throw a number at you, and it is 84%. 84% of our staff are engaged in our mission and believe the approach that the board and Colin have set for us is, is proper. It's an extraordinary number because it's a symbol that shows we're aiming high in creating a culture where employees are fundamentally dissatisfied with the status quo. We always want to do better. Rather than focusing on internal issues of politics and turf, our energies are being focused on our members and making a difference. Over the past year, our safety advisors have conducted 3,935 worksite inspections or hazard assessments. Good job, Loy, for your group. And this is a 25% increase from 2014. Last year, we conducted 471 safety demonstrations to key strategic injuries as back, eye, hand, and fall, prote and fall protection. I don't know if you've read about the, uh, the worker in Nova Scotia who suffers, suffered a serious head injury after falling off a roof just two days ago. Over the past year, we conducted 135 more demonstrations in, than in 2014 to specifically address these types of preventable injuries. It's clear to me that my sharp pencil is uh, look, in looking for efficiencies in how we deliver our programs and services 
and we're developing a high-performing culture where employees think and act like business owners. And for those of you that are in the audience that are business owners, you know the big difference between an owner and a manager or an employee. And they're starting to take personal responsibility to overall business performance. In 2015, 133 companies enrolled in the core registration certification program. That's 50% more than 2014. To me, it's a sign we are, it's a sign that our efforts at outreach are working and that we're communicating the benefits of a formal safety system such as core to bring to a company in both terms of reduced injuries and ability to bid on jobs and tenders. Last year, we core certified 57 country, er, companies. That's 30% more than in 2014 and it's a sign that we are on the right track. To turn this commitment into consistent, strong performance, we are gen gradually influencing the change of, influencing the culture of business within our organization. We're encouraging the high performance motivation and positive engagement to our, of our employees, demonstrating by, com by complementing these actions with accountable behaviors. Accountability is one of my strongest beliefs that we are accountable it's accountable up and it's down. I'm accountable to my people, they're accountable to me. Over the past year, Colin and I have fostered and continue to foster the open lines of communication that go far beyond an open door policy. We encourage creative and, initiative and innovative thinking to asking both individuals and groups to improve the company culture. It's okay to bring a problem, but please bring a solution. That's what I'm asking my people. Some of this has involved analyzing as, of analyzing the way or the what and the hows of our daily activities and understanding where we spend our money. Through this process, we are starting to, de to develop a common framework to position the association for long-term growth by focusing on the ways to pr provide member value. And that's one thing that we talk about all the time at, in the office is what's the value? Where do we bring the value to our members? So thank you for uh, letting me speak to you today and I appreciate your, your any input that you have for me. Thank you. Thanks, Colin and Blake. So again, as I said in the back of the annual report, there's the uh, regional committee uh, reports. And now I'm looking for a motion to accept the chairperson's report, the president's report, the operations report, and all the regional safety committee reports. Stacy and Stacy first, Glenda? Carolyn, sorry. Second. All in favor? Carried. Uh, auditor's report and financial statement. Now this, we went over this in the, in the board meeting um, with all the board members. So we're not gonna present the financial statement other than how it's, it's presented in the annual report. So again, I'm looking for a motion to accept the financial statement as presented in the annual report. Keith? Michael? All in favor? Carried. Item number seven, the appointment of the 2016 auditor. Um, I'm looking for a motion to appoint KPMG for 2016. David, seconder, Kim, all in favor, carried. Uh, item number eight, the resolution regarding the acts of the officers and directors. I'm looking for a motion that all acts and decisions of the officers and directors of the Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Inc., SCSA, throughout 2015 be ratified and approved. Nobody wants to make them. Ryan, thank you. <coughs> Ken, Ken, seconder, all in favor? Carried. So we move on to the annual awards. Um, first one is the Corporate Leadership in Safety Award, which recognizes a member company's dedication, outstanding contribution, commitment, and leadership to the enhancement of health and safety in the workplace. This year we're recognizing two companies for achieving this. 
Uh, the first one, uh, congr we want to congratulate Graham Construction and Engineering from Regina Region. And I'd like to call upon Brad Cornum to accept this award on behalf of Graham Construction. Wait, you might as well take the box that goes in when you get up here too. And also congratulations to RH Electric from the Yorkton region. I'd like to call on a representative from RH Electric to accept this award. Somebody must be here. <laughs> Two representatives. <laughs> Uh, next one, we're moving on to Safety Practitioner Award. The Safety Prote Practitioner Award recognizes an individual's dedication, outstanding contribution, and commitment to the success of the, their region. Uh, congratulations to Brian Hilderman from the Orkton region. Br Brian, can you please come up? And also congratulations to Helen Fornwold from the Estevan region. Helen's here. Uh, next, the Regional Safety Committee Distinguished Progress Award for 2015. The RSC Distinguished Progress Award recognizes an RSC for the de dedication and outstanding contribution to the promotion and improvement of health and safety in the construction industry. Congratulations to the Regional Safety Committee from Regina. I'd like to call on Ryan Smotra to accept the award on behalf of that committee. Next, the uh, Board of Directors Service Recognition. This one's, uh, we've had a lot of people that have been on this board and you're gonna see this as, as we move through this for a long time. Uh, it's, it's quite a commitment, especially if you're committed to the board, I guess. Um, and and this, is, this is kind of a, a special one. Uh, there's not a lot of people, everybody's busy and to take time out to, to be on a board is, is it's, we, I applaud all the people that do this. So for three to five years, I'd like to call on Nancy Chadwick to receive a certificate from the board for the board of directors. There's a few people that uh, uh, Mike Murray couldn't be here today. He also would have got one for three to five years. Um, the following interval, other intervals, so we thought Mike was going to be here. So there's a few more that couldn't be here today. Uh, again, three to five years. Bryce Chelsberg, Corey Fran Franchishin, and Chad Kulbatsky. An applaud for him, even though they're not here. Uh, five years or more service, I'd like to call on Doug Kitch to receive this award for his dedication to the board of directors. Doug has actually been uh, with us for 11 years. One more. Alan Mullen was not available to be here today for uh, five years or more. Uh, I'd like to also thank him for his dedication over the last nine years.
Actually, I'll I'll, uh, I'll call on on Stacy Beaver, our, our vice chair, to to come up and, and join me. Um, you got you got any funny things to say about Errol? Oh, I, I, the only funny thing I have to say about Errol right now, because I still am jaded about this, is that as incoming chair, he's challenged me to know everybody's name on staff as well as all the board members and I don't think he does so if on your way out you want to step up to him and ask what your name is he can reply that's all I got on Errol yeah. so um, I'd also like to thank Errol again I mentioned earlier that um, um, he's been uh, so committed over the last uh, last number of years, obviously, but um, again, available uh, to me, it's it's absolutely fantastic to have a uh, to have a chair that uh, makes themselves available, um, despite the fact that they're trying to run a, a fairly large operation. Um, but uh, I don't think that there is uh, uh, ever a time that uh, if I'd send Earl a note or give a call that. Uh, I, I wasn't getting a call back. Uh, it, it was uh, even if it was 10 o'clock at night, or or uh, while he's running through an airport or something, uh, he was always interested in taking the call, and um, uh, and again just checking on me, making sure that that um, that uh, things are good. He's got such a high interest in the success of the organization and the team. Um, uh, our our employees uh, have have seen Errol lots at our meetings where he's come in and uh, if to do nothing else just to encourage them to keep doing uh, to keep doing what they're doing and that uh, they're on the right track and uh, to keep the hammer down and all, all the all the neat things that, uh, that that you could ever expect from a chair so um, I want to thank him and uh, like to Stacey and I will present this award uh, for being our chairperson uh, of 2014 to, uh, to today. Thank you very much, Earl. Did you blink? You want to try that again? He's concerned he blinked. Oh, Earl. Read what his glasses and now blinking. You're so vain. <laughs> <laughs> so Stacy, I have an excuse if I forget people's names. I'm getting older. You can come up with one next time. Um, for uh, appointment to the board of uh, 2016 board of directors, on behalf of the nominating committee for the 2016 board of directors. I announce that Stacy Beaver will be the new chairperson, and I nominate Ryan Smoltra for the position of vice chairperson. And I'm looking for someone to second that. Gunner? All in favor? Carried. Are there any other nominations that anybody would like to make? Seeing none, I need a motion to cease nominations. From somebody. Keith? Mike? Mike Seconder? See, Stacy, I, after a while, I, I, I get them. I just, there's so many. Uh, all in favor? Carried. So I'd like to introduce the Executive Committee for 2016, and then I'm going to move forward on to the Board of Directors. And again, you get to stand. Some of these people are the same people, and some we have new people here. Um, Myself, I'll be the past chairperson. Uh, chairperson will be Stacy Beaver. Standing. Vice chairperson, Ryan Smolcha. Uh, we have to fill a position for SCSA. Uh, Corey Hunchak, by the way, was our, was our SCS, SCA appointment, or was appointed by the SCA. He had to uh, drop off the board. He's got so many other commitments, as a lot of us have, and he felt that he could not serve the, the board properly with all the other commitments that he had, he had, so we applaud him for that, for realizing that. So that's a position we have to fill, and we have to fill one, an appointment from the uh, Canadian Home Builders Association, Saskatchewan. And on here it says new member to be determined, so there must be another position. So the rest of the board, uh, SCA representative uh, Kim Sutherland, Electrical Contractors Association, Garnet Connolly. And not everybody's going to be here. 
General Contractors Association, Keith Bird. Mechanical Contractors Association, Carolyn Bagno. Industrial Trade Association, David Hagen. Structural Trade Association, Dana Padel. Roofing Contractors Association, Vernon Hunt. Saskatchewan Provincial Building and Construction Trades Council, Gunnar Passmore, Jeff Sweet, Mike Skripnik, and Dion Malikoff. Construction Owners, Glenda Barton. Estevan RSC Employer Rep, Len Mostaway. He's walking with a cane today, so he's slow to get up. That's all right. Estevan RSC Worker Rep, Matt Bake. Probably backy. Lloyd Minster RSC Employer Rep, Dorothy Carson. Moose Jaw Employer Rep, Kenrick Phillips. Moose Jaw RSC Worker Rep, David Walker. Prince Albert RSC Employer Rep, Aaron Gratius. Prince Albert RSC Worker Rep, Jeff Cochran. Saskatoon RSC Employer Rep, Pearl McNiven Williams. Saskatoon RSC worker rep Jason McLeod. His wife's having a baby today. I think that's why he's not here. Yorkton RSC employer rep Brian Hilderman. <coughs> Yorkton RSC worker rep Aaron Heimbecker. Aaron's not here. Please join me in welcoming the SCSA's board of directors for 2016. So we're almost done, so we're going to have uh, Annette, I think, she's still here. She's going to come up and give us a WCB update. Thanks, Errol. Um, I, I didn't know I was on this part of the agenda, so I looked down and went, oh, I'm at the end. I better quickly make some notes. So I'm a little ill-prepared, but I'll just speak to what I uh, spoke to a little bit at the Board of Directors meeting uh, earlier today. Um, as Colin had, uh, had talked about partnerships, um, at the WCB, we too rely heavily on our partnerships to go out there and do the work that we can't do at the board. And the safety associations are such a big part of, of who we work with on a continual basis. We're all about injury prevention, and we rely so heavily on every one of our safety associations to go out and, and uh, get those members um, on to, to move towards continuous improvement in health and safety. And we really do appreciate the work that is being done out there in the field in each of the industries with the, that are affiliated with safety associations. I can't really uh, speak to particular injury rates at this time due to the election coming up, but um, I think there is a, a good news story out there. Provincially, the injury rates have reduced, um, as well as all the rates in the indus or the construction industry are going down down as well in 2016. So, I really wanted to just say congratulations to everybody in the room. I know there's a lot of hard work out there being done in health and safety, and I don't want that to go unrecognized. I think everybody is out there working their hardest and doing a great job on on what they need to do for injury prevention. So, congratulations to everybody. Out there on that. Um, I'm looking at what else I had to talk about today. As I said, we are in an election year, so there is a lot of things that that we can't, um, you know, attend or go to um, certain events. We can't do some speaking engagements. In from March 4th to H April 4th comes comes, uh, it's called the dark period, so uh, we're very limited to what we can attend. So that's why I'm not as forthcoming with a lot of the information as I usually would be at this time. Uh, one thing I can talk about is still our Comp Institute this year is in April instead of March. We have postponed it uh, due to the election. And the uh, Comp Institute information is still up on our website. After March 4th, it will come down. So if you're interested in what's going to be talked about or presented there, please go to the website and uh, get that information before it gets taken down. 
I don't, uh, I think that's about all I have to say. Our, our um, payroll statements are due February 25th, and the um, annual average wage has gone up for submission. Uh, that amount is at 69242 for 2016, so just bear that in mind. I just want to say before I leave uh, the podium, again, we are all working towards the same goal, and that is Mission Zero in the province. And uh, over the last few years, the injury rates do represent the hard work that is being done by everybody in the province. So again, congratulations, and I really look forward to working with everybody going forward in 2016. Thank you. So for those of you who panicked when Annette said your submissions are due February 25th, I think she meant 28th. Yeah. <laughs> Is your heart beating again, Pearl? Pearl handles that for us. So the next item is uh, I need a motion for adjournment and then I actually have a, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna call Colin up first. He wants to make a, a little announcement. Thank you. Um, it, it, it's something I perhaps could have uh, mentioned in my earlier report, but um, had to had to think about the sensitivity of it. And, um, uh, a few months ago, uh, Blake and I were evaluating some things around our fall protection trailer. Uh, many of you know we have a demonstration trailer that shows the forces on a body when a with a uh, very minimal drop, and uh, has been a wonderful tool for us. Uh, and engaging young people and people on site and residential construction, but we had we were starting to have some technical challenges with it, and um, it caused us enough concern that we felt we needed to take it offline and and uh, look at either re-engineering the product or um, or purchasing something uh, different. Uh, it's a significant uh, investment for a specialized trailer like that, and so we wanted to be thoughtful in how we approached it. Um, when uh, I received a phone call couple of months later um, that, uh, that there was a family that wanted to leave a legacy gift uh, for um, in the name of their their son who was uh, killed from a fall um, and uh, and they were very interested in seeing that the association um, step out and be uh, uh, be able to, to to let people be more aware than we've ever have in the past and and um, so they did two things for us or, or with us um, they asked us to accept uh, $100,000 towards uh, the contribution towards the purchase of, of a state-of-the-art trailer, which is now on order from uh, uh, North Carolina, actually. It's a specialized vehicle uh, uh, production that uh, is a state-of-art system that we've seen in other places in Canada. And the other thing was uh, the value of about $15,000 in uh, fall protection training aids that um, that uh, Murray's just just received here uh, in the last uh, few weeks uh, to use both in the classroom um, on-site training but also to uh, make people uh, continue to make people aware and to make it a priority that this is something that uh, they need to take they need to take seriously um, and so uh, so you're on the phone and and Blake and I had opportunity to, to talk to a couple people involved and you could just feel the emotion um, in their conversation uh, with us and the passion in their heart that uh, they really wanted to see a difference they did not want to see uh, another family uh, have to experience the pain that uh, they had with the loss of their 22 22 year old son and um, so it's uh, you know it's something that a to celebrate that we are doing things that mean something to uh, to people who um, and their family live in, in uh, on the East Coast, uh, live in Newfoundland, and um, their son died here in Saskatchewan, and they uh, they really wanted to make a to make a difference, and and uh, worked uh, worked through a few other people, and 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 con connected with us to to make that happen. So that was that was it. I'm not sure how else to close on that, but uh, I just want to let you know that and. Uh, uh, thank you again for your support and the hard work you're doing and um, that uh, we need to make a difference and, and uh, you're the people to, to, to help us make it happen. So thanks again.